Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Layek and today we are going to talk about thunderclap headache and its differential diagnosis and a systematic approach to a patient who present this way. Okay, let's get to the case. It's 7 p.m. Your shift has been going good so far. A 34-year-old woman presents with the chief complaint of headache. She explains to you that this morning while running, she developed a severe sudden onset headache. It felt like something exploded in her head. The headache was 10 out of 10. She had to stop running and she went back home. She felt sick initially but didn't vomit. Uh, she took some paracetamol and uh, laid down. But um, although the headache is slightly better, it's... Uh, severe now and it, she feels agitated uh, she had a similar episode three days ago but at that time the headache went away uh, slightly sensitive to light and her neck hurts in her past medical history she suffers from episodic migraine but she hasn't had any episode for the past two months and she has hay fever medication wise uh, she tells you that uh, she has been taking a tablet for hay fever for the past four or five days twice or three times a day but she's not sure about the name of the tablet it's not her usual tablet uh, she took paracetamol today and three days ago and she's on ocp examination wise her blood pressure is 150 over 100 heart rate is 86 respiratory rate 16 o2 sat is 96 percent on air her neck is a slightly stiff but you're not 100% sure and uh, her general neurological examination is normal and please 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 don't forget to do the fundoscopy examination on every patient who present with the chief complaint of headache. Okay, so far, based on just the history, the impression for this patient is thunderclap headache. Before moving forward, let's make the definition of this type of headache very clear. Thunderclap headache is a very severe headache that has abrupt onset and reaches the maximum intensity in less than one minute. Please remember that this type of headache is not defined only by the severity of the pain but it should reach the maximum intensity in less than one minute. So if you're not sure, go back, ask your patient and make the history very clear. Now, as you can see, there are important details in this scenario. Uh, I've established that she presented with a thunderclap headache, but don't forget she had a similar episode three days ago. In her past medical history, she is known to have episodic migraine, but she states that this headache is different from her usual migraine. Uh, she's taking a tablet for her hay fever, and we know that some of these tablets contain pseudoephedrine, and she's on combined oral contraceptive pills. Uh, on her examination, she has high blood pressure, and she states that her blood pressure is usually on the low side, and uh, she has a slight neck stiffness. Okay, now I want you all to take everything into consideration and think about the differential diagnosis. The table that you see now lists the differential diagnosis for thunderclap headache. The first two diseases that are written in red are the most common causes of thunderclap headache and the most devastating ones as well. Take your time and have a good look at this table. Now on the left you have your patient and on the right you have the table of the differential diagnosis. Take a moment and think about the most possible diagnosis for this patient. It's time for investigation. As usual, you take some blood samples to check for full blood count, specifically looking at white cell counts and CRP. Uh, to look for any signs of infection. If your patient is above 55 years old, add plasma viscosity to check for giant cell arthritis as it's uh, one of the differential diagnoses of thunderclap headache. The most important investigation is a CT head and this needs to be done as soon as possible because the sensitivity of the CT detecting the aneurysmal SAH when it's performed within six hours of symptom onset is between 92% and 100%, but this falls relatively rapidly as the interval between the uh, symptom onset and performing the CT lengthens. Also, the CT head can help you exclude other differential diagnoses, such as intracranial hemorrhage, uh, ischemic stroke, brain tumor, cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, complicated sinusitis, 
and third ventricle colloid cyst. The CT head comes back as normal. The next step should be performing a lumbar puncture. Although studies showed that uh, the sensitivity of CT head for detecting SIH when it's performed within six hours of the thunderclap headache onset is between 92% and 100%, but uh, the diagnosis of SIH cannot be overlooked, therefore you have to do the lumbar puncture. And bear in mind, not all patients present within six hours, like our patient in the, in the scenario. Now I'm going to talk about logistics here. Try to perform the lumbar puncture on lateral decubitus position because you need to check the opening pressure. Uh, prepare four top white bottles and one top yellow and uh, number your bottles. Always protect your zontochromia sample from light. Although the sensitivity of CSF analysis for detection of an SIH is higher uh, when the LP is performed at least 6 hours and preferably 12 hours after SIH onset, but because of a risk of a second aneurysmal rupture within 24 hours, the LP should not be delayed. The CSF analysis comes back as uh, you can see, uh, apart from a slightly raised protein, the rest of the analysis is normal. As there is no evidence of SIH, you reassure the patient and discharge her home with NSAID and safety advice. But the very next morning, the patient returns to the hospital with the complaint of ongoing headache. She also tells you that last night she experienced 20 minutes of right arm numbness, which resolved on its own. She is still photophobic and has neck pain. She also brought her hay fever tablet with herself and you confirm that it contains pseudoephedrine. You go through the history with her again and you make sure that it's of a thunderclap headache, which means you pay attention to the rapidity of onset and the severity of the pain. You know patients with crash migraine can present with very severe headache as well, but going through the history convince you that this patient has a thunderclap headache. At this point, you admit the patient for further investigation and pain management. Now you need to decide what's the best modality of imaging for this patient. Going back to the list of your differential diagnosis, you already excluded SIH by normal CT head and lumbar puncture. The normal CT head also helped you to exclude other differential diagnoses such as pituitary apoplexy, ICH and subdural hematoma, ischemic stroke, complicated sinusitis, and third ventricle colloid cyst. Going through the patient history and presentation, you noticed uh, that the patient is not encephalopathic, so she doesn't really fit the picture of posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome. She's 34 years old, therefore she's too young to have uh, giant cell arthritis and you have a uh, normal CRP for her. Patient headache is not position dependent. It doesn't get better by lying down, so it doesn't fit the picture of a spontaneous intracranial hypotension. Now you're left with three potential diagnoses. You know for CVT, it usually presents with subacute to chronic pain, but you remember that the patient is on OCP. For carotid vertebral artery dissection, there is no Horner syndrome, but the patient has neck pain and she had an episode of 20 minutes of right upper limb numbness. For reversible cerebral vasoconstriction syndrome, you remember that the patient had a similar episode three days ago. She is on pseudoephedrine tablet and she is on a right age for this diagnosis. Therefore, you request the contrast enhanced MRI of the brain and a non invasive vascular imaging of brain and neck. This table shows the diagnostic findings for the more common causes of thunderclap headache. Um, I want you to take a minute and have a good look at this table. The brain MRI is reported as normal, but the brain MRI shows multifocal multivessel vasoconstriction. Therefore, you diagnose this patient with uh, reversible cerebral vasoconstriction syndrome or RCVS. Now, I want to talk about RCVS a little bit. You can see the diagnostic criteria here. Um, 
A pattern of recurrent thunderclap headaches between 2 to 10 over 1 to 2 week period uh, is very suggestive of RCVS. Um, the individual thunderclap headaches are often provoked by activities such as urinating, bathing, showering, bending, valsalva maneuver, and sexual activity or, or strong emotions. It can present only as thunderclap headache or your patient can have photophobia, phonophobia, altered consciousness or focal neurological deficit. RCVS tends to affect women who are in their fourth and fifth decade of life. Um, here is the table of predisposing triggers and as you can see I highlighted pseudoephedrine and our patient was taking pseudoephedrine tablet as well. CT and MRI can be normal, but it also can show uh, cortical SIH, which is crucial to differentiate from aneurysmal SIH, ischemic stroke, intracranial hemorrhage, cerebral edema. MRA can be normal or shows multifocal multivessel constrictions, strings of beads. Keep in mind that vasoconstrictions are maximal about two to three weeks after symptom onset and you might need to repeat this scan after several weeks. Treatment is with calcium channel blockers and supportive management of the pain. So these are some take home notes. Um, always confirm the history of thunderclap headache. Pay attention to the severity of the pain and the rapidity of the onset. Pay good attention to past medical history and drug history. The first line is the CT scan of the head. If the CT head is normal, you should definitely do a lumbar puncture. Check the opening pressure, protect your zontochromia sample from light, and in patients with a thunderclap headache and normal CT head and non-diagnostic lumbar puncture, further investigate with brain MRI and non-invasive vascular imaging of the head and neck. If you're interested in reading further about thunderclap headache, I suggest uh, reading this fantastic article from Continuum Journal. And also, uh, you can look on uh, Neurological Emergencies book. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thanks for listening.